There's my straight there. All right. Feels like a decent one. So when I first moved to the Northwest and started walleye fishing, I, I would go online and I'd look up lots of information. And a lot of that information was coming out of the Great Lakes region. And, uh, you know, I would follow that advice and I would come out here and I just wouldn't experience any success. And I decided to spend the better part of a year just really focusing on learning walleye and sort of just throwing everything out that I'd learned from Great Lakes anglers and try and learn from my own experiences. And one of the things that I struggled with is, you know, we, we catch walleye at a lot deeper depth than Great Lakes anglers do. Our fish are, you know, very typically, especially in the Columbia River system, this is a really nice fish, in the 40 to 40 foot to 100 foot deep range. And the lures they use in the Midwest are just too light for what we do. And so today I thought I'd go over some of my favorite deep water lures for walleye. And the first one I'm going to go over today is the Major Craft Jigpara, which I just caught this walleye on here. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about why I like this lure so much. Okay, here you can see this is the Jigpara Micro 15 gram jig. You can see it's just a, basically an iron metal jig. It falls very fast. The 15 gram is basically half ounce. I also use the 20 gram, which is three quarter ounce. And it has a little treble hook on the bottom and a stinger hook on the top. And I just jig this very aggressively near the bottom and uh, they love this jig. What I love most about this jig is that it falls very quickly, comes in a diversity of colors and uh, it's pretty affordable, anywhere from five to seven dollars a lure. So it's not crazy expensive. Very nice walleye. So a key to fishing these walleye, today I caught that fish in a, that first fish of the day I caught in a hundred foot of water, is, you know, getting that vertical presentation is super critical to all of these fisheries. And, uh, you know, being able to detect the bottom is just a huge thing. These fish are very oriented with the benthos, with the bottom. And you, know, you just can't do that with quarter ounce lures. You can't do that with lighter gear. You've got to have heavy lures in excess of a half ounce to really effectively fish in these areas. And there I'm at the bottom. There's one right there, smashed it. And so sometimes when I'm in really snaggy areas, uh, I don't want to be fishing six and seven dollar lures. And that's why I would fish the Northland Tackle sinking jig. It's just a cheap painted jig head. Less than a dollar a jig. Oop, that's a little baby guy. We'll let him go. Um, and you can get them in three quarter ounce, half ounce, even one ounce. Although I typically fish three quarter ounce like this jig here. It's just a plain old painted jig head. I find the paint to be fairly durable on them for as inexpensive as they are. And they use a thin wire brass hook, um, which you get really good penetration. It's really hard to get good penetration at depth. Now, obviously you can help yourself out with that by using a braid. I use an eight pound braid, it's very thin. I'm looking for less drag when I'm jigging deeper, especially in this current to keep that vertical presentation. But that thin wire uh, hook, jig hook will help drive that hook home and hold those fish in place. Now that took longer to get down there than the jig para jig. I just, that jig para jig drops much faster than any other lure, which is why it's one of my favorite for these ultra deep walleye. Now today I've been bit anywhere from 74 to 130 feet deep. It's not uncommon to kind of have that range. And then when I get this jig to the bottom, I'm just lifting it off. I'm not doing those big aggressive jigging strokes that I do with the jig para from Major Craft. I'm not trying to add a ton of action. It's basically just crawling this along the bottom and hoping that 
I crawl it right in front of Hungry Walleye. I'm about, I'm lifting it maybe three, five inches off the bottom and then dropping it back down, tapping it on the bottom. Always making sure I'm staying in close contact. Uh, they, these fish will typically not come up and, uh, and take a lure that's several feet off the bottom. There's my fish. All right. Feels like a decent one. Now another great thing about these Northland Tackle sinking jigs is they have a bunch of colors that are perfect for walleye. So chartreuse, orange, white, and black are usually my favorites. So they'll have a color to, to meet your needs for the day. They say that walleye vision peaks in the orange spectrum, but it's always been my experience that I do better with chartreuse. Feels like a decent fish. Got that one around 86 feet. Ooh. Head shaking a little bit. Like I said, those brass hooks do a pretty good job of getting good penetration even at those depths. This is a nice size walleye. Here we go, got it. Beautiful fish, nice. Yeah, okay, so you can see, got that guy, good hook set on that Northland Tackle sinking jig. Nice chunky 19 or so inch walleye. Nice, it'll be good eats. fish right there first drop <laughs> I was jigging with a Norisada blade bait this is a 5 8 ounce blade bait it's one of my all-time favorite walleye lures it's number two on my list comes in 5 8 and 3 quarter ounce that's a great action lure they uh, they really go for this one all seasons but especially in the dead of winter they really like it and it's an easy lure to detect the bite because they hit it so aggressively there we go another walleye pulled up from 90 feet and it's one of my more productive lures okay so there's the blade bait there's the little eater walleye it got as you can see it's got weight forward design and it it vibrates as you jig it upwards and it's uh they always hit it on the fall i never feel them um on the upstroke it's always when it falls i'll feel them pick it up and it works great it's a really good lure for beginners because there's not a lot of finesse involved so i've tried a lot of the other blade bait manufacturers and you know one of the things that's consistent amongst all blade baits is that they drop really fast and they have that slim profile. It's essentially just a piece of metal with some sort of lead head or weighted head system. But because of that, they're, they're prone to tangles on the drop and especially when, when actively fishing them. Um, the good thing is, is you know if, if they've tangled because you'll feel it stop vibrating when you pull it upward. Uh, but the North Sodas I've had the best luck with in terms of Reduce uh, tangles when I'm down there. And they have good quality hooks. And they just perform all around really well. They have a lot of different colors. Although more often than not, I just do best with uh, the plain golds and silvers or brass and silvers that I put a little bit of my own tape on. Uh, but you can try their painted versions once too. Oh, there was a bite right there. Felt it on the drop. Didn't get them. And what's great about theirs is they're fairly reasonably priced. You know, there's a lot of brands with them. 
you know, that are charging eight, ten dollars a blade bait, and that's just too much for me. Uh, most of the North Autos you can find anywhere from five to seven dollars. You can get half ounce, uh, five eighths ounce, and I think they even make a three quarter, although I fish the five eighths most of the time. You don't have to go quite as heavy as you would with a jig just because of that smaller profile. They drop really fast and uh, they'll get you down there to the bottom. So what I do is I look for contact on the bottom and then I make really strong you know two to three foot jigging motions. You'll feel the vibration of that jig on the upward stroke. That lets you know that it's fishing properly. You kind of feel like a subtle brrr. It'll transfer through the rod. That's why you want a good medium fast action rod. Oh, there was a bite on the drop and I missed it. And when you hit it, see now I'm not, oh there we go, I'm not feeling the vibration. It's much easier to detect the bite with a blade bait it is with a jig and I feel like that's why they're my favorite deep water walleye lure for beginners um, just because there's less room for error now if you're in a snaggy area obviously it can be a little bit more expensive uh, fishing there's one right there got him nice but they are extremely productive now I'll fish uh, these blade baits year-round but um, they really do shine during the winter months when the fish, um, for some reason, aren't going for jigs. There are days that jigs are the only thing that will get bit, and then there are days that blade baits are the only thing that will get bit. So I always recommend having those two in your tackle box. This fish came out at 93 feet of water. Got him. Nice. And there's another nice eater walleye headed to the bag thanks to a blade bait. There's one. Nice. And so my last lure is the VMC Moon Eye Jig. And what I like about this jig is that it comes in three quarter and one ounce. But the best thing about it is the hook. Like the, the paint doesn't really stay on the head and I don't really think the big eyeballs on it make a big difference, but it has a high carbon steel thin wire hook with a worm keeper. It helps keep my bait on there because I don't fish plastics. I almost always fish Nightcrawler and this helps them from stripping that night crawler off of my jig. Alright, there we go, we got him. Now I fish it just like the other jig, basically just bouncing along the bottom. Now the VMC Moon Eye jigs are twice as expensive as the Northland sinking jigs, which is why I wouldn't use them if it was a really snaggy area. But they are my best hook in areas where I know I'm not going to snag up. Just a much better hook, much better worm keeper, and uh, just a really quality jig. The paint does come off easier than on the Northlands, but uh, it's still enough on there that left on there to entice that strike. I think they're after the worm anyways. Of course, with that one ounce uh, jig head on that VMC Moon Eye, this thing will just rock it to the bottom, and I can feel the bottom. I know I'm in contact with the bottom. And what's great, unlike a lot of other jig manufacturers, who tend to up the size of their hooks as they go up in weight. The VMCs all stay that perfect size. I think it's like a one on or two watt hook, which is perfect for uh, these walleye. It's just another reason I like this jig so much. And it's just such a productive lure for me. So there I'm on the bottom. I know with confidence I'm on the bottom. And I'm just gonna lift it off the bottom. I'm not making sharp motions like this. I'm just lifting. It's less is more with these jigs. So it's completely opposite of the blade bait and the jig para where I'm really flicking my wrist strongly. 
I'm just doing a slow lift and I'll feel them pick up that jig. Oftentimes when I drop it back down, I just start to lift, they'll come up and pick it up with their mouth. And today I'll say that the you know stronger action of blade baits and the jig para were the more productive lures. They were getting more consistent strikes um, on the drift, but you just never know. It, that seems to change day to day, hour to hour. Um, sometimes I think there's a, a cohort of fish down there that are really uh, activated by strong action. And then I think there's another group down there which might be turned on by less action. And so I think it's good to go over an area that you know is holding fish with both lures and really maximize the number of fish you pull out of a slot. Because like I always say, there's a lot of places where walleye aren't, very few places where they are. And if you know where they are, you should do um, your due diligence to pull as many fish out of there as you possibly can. Oh, that was a bite. I missed it. See, I felt that. He picked him up in his mouth. He picked it up. I saw it on the rod tip there. I might go back and show you that if I can pick it up on the camera. And it'll just pick it up, swipe at it, spit it before you can get your hook set on it. It's a long way down there. That's why it's good to have the braid. Okay, another lure that I'm going to give honorable mention is this Moonshine Lures Shiver Minnow. Now, this is not a confidence lure for me, but I've been around enough deep water walleye anglers on trips in Idaho and in Montana to know that this lure does work in the right hands. And, you know, where I fished there with these, I've typically been fishing in less current. And they, because they're like a, uh, almost like a jigging wrap, they have that fluted tail, which causes them to sort of dance um, all over the bottom. They'll work more of the bottom. Um, and they fall kind of in a circle. I don't tend to favor them because I tend to be in current and more extreme depths than they tend to be where they're fishing in maybe 40, 50 feet of water. But today, you know, the, the action lures have been doing it. So I'm gonna send this down. The nice thing about the moonshine lures is they do come in heavy weights, one ounce, two ounce, um, in great walleye colors. They really are developed uh, with walleye in mind. Another reason I wanted to include it is, you know, it's, it's evidence that I'm still learning as a, as a walleye angler. I'm always learning from others. Um, we all approach walleye fishing a little bit differently and what works for me may not be perfect for somebody else. But uh, that's the fun of fishing, right? Is you're always expanding your horizons. And even no matter how confident of a walleye angler you are, I always feel like I learn something every time I go out on the water. So I'm, I'm going to do a couple drifts with the Shiver Minnow and see if we can't drum up some business. It does take longer to get down there because of the way it kind of falls in a spiral. And uh, I always have a bit of a chat, more of a challenge finding the bottom with this thing. There it is. And you can aggressively jig these and it'll it'll search down there for you. I do like to keep it near the bottom. I tend to do stronger flicks of the wrist, although you can do big rise and free falls with this too and it'll spiral a little bit more. I feel like with this lure it's harder to get that right jigging motion uh, to really maximize its potential in terms of it searching and effectively fishing. You know, as with the blade baits or those spoons, it's really about letting it fall just to the bottom or near the bottom and ripping it up off there and giving it um, a lot of action. And you can feel it so you, you know that... Oh, there's fish! Shoot, there we go. Today the action lures have been the money makers. That's the Shiver Minnow. Coming through for me today, this, these blade baits and spoons and such have really just been killer today. I got him on just on that tail hook, so get him in there. It has a uh, it has a treble hook in the bottom, and then it has a uh, tail hook. But I uh, got this guy. He came up and smacked it. Hey, there's that shiver minnow with that tail. See, just got him barely with that tail hook there. 
through the chin so he came up and swiped at it. Nice little eater male. What do you say we try and do one more of that and then we'll call it a day. Well I've done a couple more drifts here with the Shriver Minnow and haven't come across another fish but it was good to get one on that first drift with it to show that it is a very capable walleye lure. I think I still have a lot to learn about how to fish it effectively. I'll put links to all of the lures uh, included in this video, and if you found this video particularly helpful, uh, be sure and use that super thanks button to do a one-time donation. It really helps out the channel in terms of equipment and sustainability and making videos. All right, I'll see you guys next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.